All right, so let's take a look at the uh, look at the uh, some market action this morning. This is the NQ, the Nasdaq, uh, Nasdaq 12020. This is 12020. So we have momentum. Uh, this momentum when the market gets in a stronger or weaker position, uh, we have the software that's going to be on the download page uh, for members. And um, this is the NQ because it shows a lot of trades here this morning since around what. The last uh, six six fifty three. So, you know, you're talking about it's eight twenty three now. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, you, there's a PDF that Gerald just sent out to you that that's leading into this. Uh, um, when the market gets in a stronger, weaker position, um, we sent that PDF to you. You have another one coming out that's going to have strictly settings with the software. Um, that's strictly going to have because these settings are pretty simple. Um, this is a software where you don't need um, extensive uh, back testing, forward testing, all that stuff, because it's, it's pretty much straightforward. Um, if the market is in a momentum move up, you're looking for uh, buy signals. If it's momentum move down, if it's in a weaker position, you're looking for sell signals. Um, a, a lot of you traders, what you'll do is, and um, I'm, I'm having a toggle switch for you, uh, when you're uh, ATR gets violated, finally gets violated. This is a great time to start a position. Um, so this one had a nice transition phase down here at 730. But you can see the, the trades keep clicking um, right now in the NQ. So, uh, but what you're going to find is that you can use it as a toggle switch where you can turn once your ATR that you put in is violated from a stronger, weaker position in the market. Uh, you can actually put in, uh, you can put in to take only the first set of trades uh, here, or you can take uh, two contracts, let the runner run, and just keep going until, which I'll show you how to do in a second, until your ATR is violated. So some of you will want to take multiple entries where you have a transition phase from a weaker to stronger market. So this is a weaker market. I'm going to go over weaker and stronger market, how we look at them, why this is defined that way. But this is a weak market. Obviously, this is strength, buying strength. And then this is selling weakness. OK, so there's a couple ways you can do it. Uh, you can actually have multiple setups that keep uh, clicking trades. Um, the best trades you're going to find is when you go first go into a stronger or weaker market at this inflection point here, which would be at this level. You see a nice uh, a series of trades. Or when you see a transition phase here where we start going from sells to buys, once I see this, I'm looking for a series of strong uh, setups in that direction. And this even works. The great thing about using this technique, it works in CHOP also. Um, so if you were like trading, let's say, the big contract on the ES, you typically will get your first and second moves off of uh, two targets off, whether it be your eight uh, eight tick targets or twelve tick targets, but typically um, the S and P will move from a stronger position uh, or weaker position market. The average is around two points to two and a half points. It likes to move in that direction. Um, so we have, like I said, a toggle switch on the software for you, where you can actually look at just getting in the first trades. Now. If you want to, you can come into the software and you can trade less. Con you can trade instead of one contract. You can bump two up. Um, let's say you want to go for 12 ticks on the first target and 1,000 ticks on the second target. Uh, what you're doing now is you're trying to get in an initial push uh, of your first target, and then you can go break even plus one if you want. But then what you're trying to do is you're trying to get this whole run until this ATR is violated, until it's closed outside of, it will not close the position out. So um, you're looking to short the market. Let's get this down a little bit so you can see. So you get the first position off, and then it will just run. Here's trade since, like, say, 640 this morning. So it's going to close the position out here in a second. Now you're closed out. So you can do that if you, you want to, but what happens is, is it uh, uh, you can do multiple trades inside of the running ATR, or you can do 
or you can do a single, I mean not singles, but um, runners like this if you like. The whole key to using the software is that you can use it standalone if you want, um, or you can use it in conjunction with um, stronger and weaker markets, which I'll go over here in a second. But what you want to look for, like I said, is that you get these moves in the market, the first setups after a um, after a uh, uh, ATR violation, which I go over all these settings in the uh, settings PDF. Now the other PDF we're going to get. So that's two PDFs that we, we've created. We created one for the indicator, strictly methodology. That has our four setups in it, which I'll go over in a second. And then um, the second uh, uh, strategy, I mean the um, PDF we got out, is the methodology behind this. The third one that I'm actually just setting strictly, we're not going into commentary, it's strictly settings. What settings you need, um, and then... Uh, you know how to change them. I define every single setting in this. They're very simple. It's not this strategy is a very straightforward strategy where the settings are very simple to understand. So um, that will be a third settings PDF, which will only be a couple pages. It's not very long. It's just strictly settings. Uh, like yesterday when we got the uh, uh, the strategy PDF is is a methodology to you guys out. That is strictly showing you. Um, that's strictly showing you the methodology behind it, and then we'll. Um, I'll show you the. Uh, I'll show you the settings with another PDF. So, the other thing what we can do is this: is that you can. W what we're finding is is we're finding that these are our setups from yesterday. Okay, let's just take a look at the overall setups and overall right across the board. So what I'm finding is, I, I nicknamed sort of this the Babe Ruth setup because traders text me about this all the time, about the failure setup. It's becoming one of my favorite setups uh, to look for. The reason being is it starts big trends. Um, if you look in that PDF I sent out to you guys or Joe sent out to you yesterday, I showed you a lot of examples of last week how the big runners on the S&P were started with the failure setup. I'll go over that in a second. But these are the top trades that you look for um, during any given day. And this is the 12020. And I'm going to show you you can use this with your chart trader and your ATM a trail system, what Ninja has. Um, or you can use it with the automation momentum software. So if I see the market going into a weaker position here and I've got a failure trade coming up, this is a great time to turn the software on to look for multiple entries for automation or even to start an initial position. So all these spots are great spots to start an initial position once they qualify. Now this is in, like I said, in the indicator, uh, these are extra ones that came up here when I got off the, uh, when I got off out of the office yesterday. That's a Momo. And let me go through each of these setups, defined setups, slingshot, whoops, and I'm going to show you the rules. Now these rules are in the PDF on the member's landing page. It tell you the exact rules, FZR slingshot, and then this is a slingshot also. And this is the NQ also, I'll show you the NQ, but I'm going to show you why and how these four setups dictate the rhythm of the market on a daily basis. You don't need to uh, understand any other setups as far as with our methodology. There's no other learning curve to understand. It's going to be one of these four setups on a daily basis that happen around the clock. So let me get this. Oops. So that's a Momo. And then we, this morning we've only had two setups. We had a slingshot. I'm going to show you why you really want to stock a failure trade or what I call a Babe Ruth trade. Those are what's called, I call it a Babe Ruth because typically when you do a first wave trade, um, it's a, you're batting singles and doubles, mainly singles. You do a Babe Ruth trade, you're looking for a home run hit. And um, we've, we're getting that with, these, with, the, uh, with the failure Babe Ruth setup. 
which it happened yesterday. But let me show you here one second. Let's define how you get in these specific setups. So there we go. So this is a whole trading session. Let's look at a whole trading session and even today's session. So this is a day. It started at midnight on Tuesday, and now it's, what, 8.30 in the morning. So let's take a look at the whole day session on how these work. First of all, whether you trade automation or whether you trade getting into these setups, there's two key, key variables to making the system work. The first one are these key zones. If we did not have these zones, we wouldn't know where to look for these four key setups. Now, I got three trend setups, and I got one uh, reversal setup. So the free trend setups, let's go into the importance of order. We got the first wave, and that happens on the 12 or 13 Renko, your smaller Renko charts. That's the first wave. That's a trend trade. Then we go into the second trade, and these are all defined in the PDF. Tons of examples. I got, what, over 150 page, page plus PDF on the members page. And then the ne next one is your Momo setup. And then these are all trend trades. And the next one is your uh, sling FZR slingshot, full zone retracement slingshot, catch and rolling position traders, w WPA, or WPT, sorry, or FZRs. And the last one, the, the last one that we need to understand, and this is on a daily basis, they're easy to see because all, all you do is you follow which one's going to come up next is your failure trade. And I absolutely love these trade setups because that's when we're looking for big moves in the S&P, NASDAQ futures, what have you. So th those are the top setups. You have your trend as a top three. So if, you're, if your zones are green, you want to look for those top three at any given time during the day. And th they're going to come usually in order. When I first get a trend change here from red to green, I'm looking for a first wave. That's where you get, and I'll go over it in a second, that's where you get a push up and then a retracement. If a momentum is already, the trade's already moving, Momo, the Momo's, the trend's already started. The F FZR slingshots, the, F the trend's pretty much already started, so you're going to get them at the beginning of trade, trend and in the middle, slingshot trades. But the, the failure trades are called the Babe Ruth trades. Those are the beginning of a trend. Those start big trends. And like I said, the, the PDF that we sent out to yesterday, I showed you a lot of examples of that last week on the S&P where this started big trends. I'll show you exactly how to do that. So how you can do it by using this automated software over here, what we can do, if I see a, if I see a failure trade coming up into, now, now, now you can use this software A by itself, if you strictly want automation by itself, like it is doing now, meaning you're taking every single trade from a weaker to stronger position. So this is stronger position. This is a weaker position. And now I just took a long here in a stronger position when I started the video. Right? So you can, and this is a weak position over there. So you can take by itself by doing that, right? However, what you can do, though, is you can take your first trades are typically your best trades to take also in the emphasis of the trade. So we can take multiple setups. Like here's firing multiple setups right now. You can just do one contract. And depending on your profit goals, your profit and loss for the day, how much you want to sustain as far as your loss a threshold and your profit threshold, you can see we're taking multiple trades to the upside here, multiple to the downside, multiple there. What I'm finding is these first these first trades after violation of an of an ATR with this system, you're getting some really nice trades. So your strategy on this methodology may be just, hey, I'm going to wait for the first ATR violation, and with my toggle switch, it's automatically going to fire in these first trades. So let's say you're an S&P 500 trader. You're like, well, I, I want to get off the first couple points. I want to get off uh, 8 ticks or 12 ticks 
I'm going to go for three points or two points. And then I'm going to go break even plus one and try to get the run. Or I can do multiples and I try to get in after the first. Let the software get you in. Now, the software will get you in automatically. Let's say if you have the toggle switch on. It's not, it's not going to run a trade until you have a transition from here. From a violation of the ATR. Once it gets in, it's going to take that first trade automatically for you. So you can do that automatically. This is in the PDF settings that I have for you. So you can do it a couple ways. You can do it this way where it takes multiple trades or we can do it this way where it takes runners, right? So that being said, you can let it run on your toggle switch. If I were trading a chop market or a trend, this works both ways if you take first trades after an ATR violation because it'll work in chop too because you're taking the first set of trades after an ATR violation with stronger, weaker markets. Or you can do it this way where you get in to a position and then you go break even plus one. So if it comes back down here, you know, it's going to break even you out. If not, it's going to keep running, 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 running. So you can use this software in conjunction with my setups if you'd like. So let's say that you see a Momo setup or if you see a failure setup or if you see a um, you see uh, I I any type of setup as far as my four my four top setups, right? You see a first wave setup or what have you. What you can do is you, if you want to manage, let the automation manage your trade for you. Let's say that the we get in on a failure trade up here, and the failure trade are right here, and it's cranking right here. Is a, the failure trade starts pulling in. And that's where it starts. You get a green pull-in bar. You can turn your automation and get most of the move. Or let's say that a Momo trade starts here. You can pull it in, get most of the move. If you don't want to do that, you can actually use, if you don't want to use this automation, you can use NinjaTrader Chart Trader. And from there, you can get into these moves using an ATM. So an ATM would be where you get uh, you don't want to use automation, and what you do is you like to get into trades that um, that have a trailing uh, stop, so you can program your stop. So let's say you want to go the first 12 ticks on two contracts. You can profit trigger your 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 trail. This uh, Ninja Trader has videos on this on YouTube, where you do the ATM automatic uh, man management system and you can take a picture of these I, I, I put these in the settings PDF for you just as a general rule of thumb let's say you're doing two contracts every 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 so many ticks it will the frequency will change your stop it'll start it'll go break even plus one after 12 ticks so you can make it eight ticks if you want and then it'll just start moving up with price or down with price so this is a way you can do it also. When these, when these four setups come up, you can use the strategy where you have a profit, let's say, of 15 ticks. And you go out to 100 ticks, let's say. And then you could, you could put that in with your set stop trail so I put this in the PDF for you guys that don't understand how to do this uh, so that's in the PDF settings with this software that you guys are going to be on the download page for you members so um, so there's a couple ways you can do it you can do it like I said you can do it in the automated software that we have that we you you see a trade set up and I'll show you how each trade setup is defined in the room here or you can use your automatic trail system to fire in the trade and you're good to go Let's take a look at the setups per se, and let's take a look at these first of all. So this is a 12020. All right, these three trades like to fire on the 12020, right there. The first wave trade you can get it also. This is a first wave trade, but predominantly those three trades will find the 12020. The failure trade fires 
on the 12020 specifically. And that's that big Bay Brew trade. I'll show you specifically how to, the rules to how to get into that type of trade. So what we're going to do, this is the whole trading day, you have multiple opportunities as the price ticks along. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 opportunities according to these four setups. So the first rule of thumb when we look at this is very simply is we got to get the trend right. If you don't get the trend right, then we're, we're, we can't understand how to trade these trades. That's what these zones are for. I have these zones, and I have a green zone, and I have a red zone. The green zones, I, I categorize as a shallow and deep retracement. A shallow retracement are these three zones, right here, three zones. This is considered a shallow retracement. That's price retraces, retraces into it. And this is a deep retracement. There's my deeper zone. All right. I'm not going to look for my Bay Brute trade until I break this zone, this, this lower zone. So as long as I'm staying, if, if my zone is green and staying intact, I'm still looking for what? I'm looking for trend trades, period. I'm only looking to buy, no matter what, looking to buy. If my zone is red like it was all day yesterday, I'm only looking to sell. So you're not looking for any buys at all for trend trading whatsoever if the zone's red. And you're not looking for sells if you're green, you're looking for buys. When I say trend trading, I mean these three trades. These are with trend. First wave. A first wave is simply when I have a market that goes from red zone to green zone, and I look for that first pullback wave. It's an ABC long. You come up, you retrace, and I get that first ABC long right here. That's a first wave trade. What happens is your first wave on the 12020 typically turns into a slingshot two for confluence on two trades. That's a first wave. That's also what's called a slingshot. So the first one is a, is a first wave trade. That's when you get a trend change, red to green, green to red. A lot of traders look for it on the 12 or 13 Renko. You look for a lot of singles and doubles as far as that goes on that one. You don't get a lot of triples on it. I mean, sometimes it runs 10 points. 8 points, 12 points, 13 points. But typically, you're looking for singles. You're looking for, you know, you know, three, two, three, four, five-point runs on a first wave. Now, the slingshots in the Momo, you're looking for doubles, right? You're looking for doubles, singles, doubles, triples. Failure trades, you're looking for a home run hit. You're looking for this. When you watch see a failure trade come up, you're possibly looking for a huge move in that direction. I'm going to show you how, how to look for that setup also. So the first wave trade is very simple. You have a trend change red to green, green to red, and that's first retracement looking for a long. The second one is a MOMO. What a MOMO is, momentum. That's momentum. What a MOMO is, that's when you have a stronger position with a green zone or a red zone. MOMOs, you want to be above the shallow retracement. Okay, so you want to be above this zone. All three of these, uh, uh, you want to be away from this green. You want to be away from the red and the downside on Momos. So Momos, you actually want to be away from the zones. Why? Because that's when they're really trying to mark the market down or mark the market up when buy stops or sell stops are getting taken out by counter trend traders. The easiest way to find a MOMO, which is your second trend trade, is very simple. It's all zone and also oscillator. So it's got to have a combination of both. I need a strong oscillator, my signal line, and I need to be away from my green zone. So any type of pullback on counter trend bars, where it be red turning into green, red turning into green, red turning into green, I want to have a strong signal line, 
a signal line is defined, defined as two signal lines below. I got a thin signal line and I got a thick signal line. The thin signal line is used for my slingshots. The thick the signal line is used for my failure trades and also my Momo trades. All right. This, the first waves are pretty much the first wave, but I'm going to show you how you, you, you can use this technique also on the first wave. But a Momo is strictly momentum. That's all it is. So if I get momentum, if I get momentum here, Momo, on a Momo, then what I can do, if I want to, I can use the automation, my automation software to fire in there or use my ATM to start the trade-off. So if I'm using automation software like this, where I'm using automation, and my Momo starts right here at this level, that's Momo, then you can turn your automation software on and try to get a series of string of trades to the upside or downside, right? Because there's momentum in the market, all right? So you can use this automation software with my four setups. Use it with my four setups. So Momo is defined where the oscillator is above 80 or below 20 would be your best when you're away from price. Now your oscillator is the, the, the thin signal line can pull back all the way down to 40. So it can't break 40, in other words. So for this Momo here, you see your thin signal line. I want to stay above 40 when I get a green reversal bar, when these arrows fired. I want to stay above 40 on this pullback. The best trade you're going to have when you both signal lines are pegged above 80 or pegged below 20. That is serious momentum. This is serious momentum in the market. And this started on the S&P at 4509 yesterday, and the S&P cranked up to 36. Almost a 26-point move on the S&P, starting with this Momo, breaking through my order block, which is my supply-demand line. So I love these order blocks. You break through it. Old supply becomes new demand. Retested it right on it. Broke through it, Momo came in, and we just fired to the upside. But a Momo is very well defined. It has a very simple rule. I got to be away from my shallow retracement above, and I got to have a strong signal line. I want it at least above 40, but I love when they're pegged above 80 or below 20. The third one is an FCR single or, or slingshot. This is where this morning, we've had a couple in this morning, This is where we actually got a failure trade possibly happening now on the S&P, and I'll show you why. But this is where you get deeper into the zone. Now you're going deep into the zone. You get deep in the zone. Here's what's got to happen on a failure trade. The, the zone still has to work with the signal lines below. What you want to see happen is, is you want to see happen your thin signal line. You'll want to come down through the 20 threshold, 20, this big green line, 20. And you'll want to come up through minimum 65 because that's my resistance on Momo trades. But traders have been waiting to go down through and up through 20 for momentum. Up through 80, sorry. So here's your two inflection points on a slingshot. You'll want to come down through 20 and come back up through 80 for the slingshot coming right why zone integrity is holding. So your momentum entry would be at this level. Momentum slingshot would be right there. Vice versa, this trade that happened this morning again, you're green, you're getting deeper in the zone. I'm going to show you why this is a possible failure trade coming up right now. It could break through the zone. I'll tell you why. We've got a possible failure forming where this thing could break and start rallying down, to, uh, tanking to the downside. But now we're deep into the zone on the slingshot. I get below 20, and I'm cutting right up through my 80 threshold for the push. Now, 
Look what's happening right now. We're into the zone again for a possible slingshot. I went down through 20, but I can't break through 80. What does that tell me? I got a possible reversal in price action. So it's not a slingshot because it's not breaking through my 80 threshold. But the big thing about the failure trade, which I'll come up next, if I get below minimum 40 for sells or above minimum 65 for buys, I got a possible rollover on a failure trade. The best is when this big large signal line on failure trades, you watch this big large signal line. Slingshot, you watch the thin line down through 20, up through 80, down through 20, up through 80. On failure trades, you watch that larger signal line. You can see the S&P starting to weaken. I'm getting into a weaker position. I'm below 40. That's my threshold. So price action is starting to weaken right now on the S&P. All right, I'm going to show you what a failure trade looks for in a second. So let's go over the slingshot again in the MOMO. So remember, a slingshot, and this is all day yesterday's price action, a slingshot is when you come down through, let me get an arrow here, I'll show you all these trades that happened yesterday. You come down through 20, back up through 80, that started that big move to the upside. Down through 20, up through 80, started that big move to the upside. Slingshot, 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 slingshot. Momentum is where slingshots, you're allowed to get into the zone, into the deeper zone. Where momos, you want to stay above green or below red because it's strictly momentum, blow off momentum, and you want a really strong oscillator. Really strong oscillator. Your signal line, the best you can get if both signal lines are above 80 or below 20. You're allowed to pull back to 40 before it reverses, but that shows your strength. And on the downside, it'd be the same way. The downside, we're looking for the same thing. Slingshot is when we're in a hard downtrend all day yesterday. Slingshot is where we came up above 80 and shot right back down through 20. That started that huge downtrend yesterday at 4, 420 in the morning. It got, we, we price action came down. We started moving back up. We're really weak because I'm away from my shallow zone. Momentum, both signal lines had serious momentum because the first oscillator was below 65. The second oscillator was below 65. When you get a red reversal bar, that told you that's a Momo setup. You get a tweezer that happened here. Both signal lines were below. Then I get a full retracement into my zone. And I get above 80, back down through 20 for a slingshot here. Then I get above, down through 20, above 80, down through 20 again for the big slingshot there. Then you can see here, I don't get above. So this actually was only one slingshot over here, this slingshot at this level, right there at that level, because I got above 80, back down through 20, got that move, up through 80, did not get down through 20 again until here. So you can see the accuracy if you wait up 80 down through 20. So the slingshot again. So you can see that first wave Momo and slingshot trades are all with trend. All right, those are all trend trades. So they're going to happen with trend. So here's the order importance of what happens. The market starts off when you go red to green or green to red. In this transition phase, you usually get two things. You're going to get a failure trade and a first wave that come up together. Those typically will come up together, meaning a failure trade will start it, and then the first wave trade will start the move. As we're moving up, then your slingshots and momos come in place. But I, I'm not going to get a slingshot and a momentum trade unless I start trending. These are momentum trades. I'm not going to get deep retracement on a slingshot or momentum until I start trending. So when you look at these trades, these slingshots, momo, momo, slingshot, 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 starts trending after the first wave here, slingshot, slingshot, momo, momo, slingshot, slingshot. Where your failure trade, our guy called a Bay Brew trade, that's going to start at the infancy of a move. What does that mean? It's going to start right here. Now, let's, let's take a look at this. I was actually in the room, and Phil, that's why you're asking why I was up so late that night. I was actually on top of this guy right here, right after midnight. I could see this forming in the market. You guys saw me playing around in the room. I saw this failure trade forming in the market. 
wait one second. So what 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 is a failure trade and, and how does it work? So here's the morning right here, the failure trade. Let's show this real quick. This really set up really pretty, and this sets up on a weekly basis. It's a failure trade. So I call this a failure trade setup or Babe Ruth trade. That's why I I I made that a lot into the PDF because when you get this on the download page, you're going to get strictly settings. There's not going to be commentary. I'm not going to put the cart before the horse. So this will be this is our failure setup. So you see a lot of these examples I put in the uh, for last week, last couple of weeks on this on the S&P works on the Nasdaq futures. I'll show you the Nasdaq in a second, etc. When you get to the lower zone, you're looking for a slingshot, right? So I'm looking for a slingshot when I get into my zone. So I get a first wave trade here, right? Trend change, first wave trade there. It's a first wave. It's also a slingshot. Look what happens. I get below 20, and I cut right up through 20 right here, or 80. So I got a slingshot move to the upside. Stop below, two ticks below the swing low. I get another slingshot down through 20, up through your threshold of 65.80, slingshot. But what happens is, what happens when you get to the lower zone? I'm still looking for a slingshot, but look at, look at my small signal line. I get a green bar reversal, but that's not good enough. A, a green Rinko. I'm getting a green Rinko. This is how this sets up. I was all on top of this when this happened. And this is what I showed you last week on the microphone. If you guys were in the microphone in the trade room last week, I pointed out a failure trade, back-to-back -back failure trades before they happened. And they were big trades. Uh, they were a total of, what, 39 S&P points between two trades. And I told you before they happen, look for the failure trade. Well, here's, here's how, I, how I recognize them. If I get to my lower zone on any market, I don't care what market you look at. If I get to my lower zone, traders can stalk these trades alone and do very, very well at the system because you're very patient and just wait for them. If I get to my lower zone, I'm the, you want to see a green reversal bar or you want to see a, a dual doji, back-to-back -back dojis. If that happens, you immediately look at your signal lines below. Remember, I look at my signal lines below for slingshots because when I get into my zone, whether it be shallow or deep, I want to go above 80, back down through 20, minimum 40 right here, threshold, right, to get that slingshot going, that big trade there. Even Momos, you want below 65. But what I want to do is, is that I want to see a two green bars that's showing it's a possible slingshot. But where the failure trade pulls you in at is here. It pulls you in when your oscillator does not move above your 65 threshold to your 80. That gives you a big heads up, right? You're thin. Your big signal line is my main go-to guy though on failure trades. So my thin signal line, it shows you it's not a, it's not a slingshot. It's the only trade I got, right? It's not momentum because momentum has to be outside of the zone. I know it's not a momentum shot trade. I know it's not a momentum trade. I know it's not a first wave trade because the first wave trades only happen after a trend change. So the only two trades I got left is either it's going to be a slingshot or a failure trade. That's the only thing I got left. I only got four setups in the trade room. So if it comes to my lower zone and my oscillator is not cranking above minimum 6580 to pull me in for a slingshot and I get my big signal line that's staying below my 65 minimum threshold, I love it when it's below 80, I mean below 20 for sales. If it's if my large signal line is below 80 minimum 65, I mean 40 right there, 40 minimum below 20, I'm sorry, minimum below 65 Below 20 is your best. If I see that and I get a red bar reversal, this is a start of a possible huge trend. And this starts the whole wave process. This starts all my setups. This trade right there, the failure setup at the lower end of the zone, will start all my setups. 
every one of my proprietary setups, every one of these proprietary setups, first wave Momo FCRs, full zone retracements. It starts every single trade right there, your failure trade. It starts them all. So I got a possible failure over here right now happening on the S&P. Why? It's not the best. It's not below 80. I below 20, I'm sorry, but it's below my threshold of 40. Remember, 65 for shorts, 40 for longs. I'm going to stay above that with my signal lines. If my thick signal line stays below 40, I mean, right here, you may, have a, you may break a trend change. This market may start cranking between my, my order blocks. We may have a fall from 20 or 40, 45, 21 down to 45.03 coming up. So if this failure trade starts the trade, if it starts, if it starts a trend change right now, and I go green to red, and this failure trade starts cranking because it's weak, the, the S and P is weakening right now. My oscillator is below 40. If it starts to weaken. That tells me, and I get into failure trade, then I got what, what's up next? The first one would be the first wave trade, the first trade that comes back up on the first wave, whether it be on the 20 or the 113, 112, whatever you want to use. And then the trend will start. The trend will start, and then we look for what? When the trend is going down, we'll look for momentum and slingshots. The first wave is only at the first trend change. You only got one shot at it. But you get a lot of shots at Momo and slingshots on the way up or way down. As you can tell yesterday and today, slingshot, Momo, because failure started it, slingshot, Momo, Momo, slingshot, slingshot, slingshot. And then first wave, slingshot, slingshot, Momo, Momo, slingshot, slingshot. So what's going to start the overall move down again? You know it. Failure trade. So this zone's going to have to fail. So I'm going to know if this zone starts failing. If this oscillator stays below 40, I'm going to have a failure on the zone. All right, if I get a failure on the zone, then we're looking for a possible move as far as that goes to that side of the market, you know, for a push, overall push. Now, what we can do then is we can use momentum and these setups in our favor. Because what we could do with our momentum software then, if you want to use automation, you can have your predefined trailing stop in, and when a Momo starts here, or a slingshot starts here, or a failure trade starts here, right? Our first wave starts here, you can turn the software and get a series of trades. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to use this software entirely by itself, then your best trades are after the transition. The transition is here, that's your best set of trades. Trans transition here, that's your best set of trades. Transition here, that's your best set of trades. The early transition phase. So you can use this automation with overall the overall setups. And if some of you don't want to do that, you can just strictly use the ATM. The ATM, what that is, is I'll show you in the PDF on settings. Remember, this settings PDF you're going to be getting next with the software. It's strictly settings. It's only a couple pages. It's strictly settings. There's not a lot of commentary. The first two PDFs, a lot of commentary is to understand these setups. Because if you don't understand these setups and you don't know why a failure set, trade setup comes up or you don't know why a slingshot comes up or you don't know why a Momo setup comes up, then you cannot do automation. Can't do it. If you don't know why the market's trending down or trending up with the zones, you can't do automation. If you don't know why these are happening, the reason they're happening, because these are very simple strategies to implement. First wave Momo FZR failure trade. So you can use the ATM structure on the chart trader to fire you in these trades. Or you can use the automation when these trades come up. Now, like I said, if you want fully, some of you want full auto, that's fine. 
If I were doing full auto on this, what you're getting on the download page, I would take the first trades after a transition right here. I have it as a toggle switch. I would take the first trades after a transition. I would take it here, 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 and here. That's the first trades I would take. First trades after auto, a, a, a transition. Why? Because your first trades after transition are going to be your high probability trades. So you want to take the first trades after transition. All right. If you want to look for runners, like I said, you can go down and use your multiple entry. I mean your um, your runner. Let's say put this out to 1,000 ticks, but you can have 12 ticks, 8 ticks, break even plus 1, try to get a runner. Then what you're looking at, let's say if you have a failure trade come up, for example. A lot of you guys want to run this. If a failure trade comes up, you'll want to get these moves like this this morning on the NASDAQ futures. Okay? Now, let's look at the NASDAQ futures for possible setups that happen on on other markets, right? So the same setups that apply to the S&P apply to the NASDAQ futures, etc. It's going to be the same set of rules. You're looking for a first wave, slingshot, momo, and then a failure. But a failure or a trend change will start an overall momentum move. So when I get a momentum move in the market, it's going to look like this in any type of market you trade. So if I'm trading a market, And I see this, if I come to, this, this starts trends right here. This starts trends with my zone and oscillator. Watch for this on the NASDAQ also. The main characteristic with this, I want to be in the outer zone. I want my large signal line to be above 80 for buys or below 20 for sells. I want to stay pegged. I want to see red bar reversals. I want to see the first green bar reversal. If that starts, that the failure trade starts, let me explain this. The failure trade starts the moves. It starts the first wave. Here's a first wave off the 120. First waves off the NASDAQ futures are awesome trades if they stay in the shallow retracement form. Stays with my shallow retracement. That's a first wave trade. That's also a slingshot. A slingshot goes from below 20 back up through my minimum threshold of 65, 80 right there, down through 20 above 80. So the NASDAQ, if you're trading it, the failure trade started the move. The first wave slingshot gave it to you also here. And then you go right into a momentum trade for the move up. So when you're trading the NASDAQ futures also, you're looking for that failure trade to start a setup. So here's a first the first wave trades work really good on the Nasdaq futures, but you're looking for a failure trade. So this is a failure trade. The failure trade, you got to the outer zone. Remember, right here, let's look at the zone. We don't get a slingshot here because what? The oscillator did not it went above 80, did not go back above 20. So that's not a slingshot. Here Oscillator goes above 80, does not go through 20. That's not a slingshot. That's a what? That's a failure trade. That's what's setting up on the S&P right now. The S&P is setting up for a failure trade right now, just like this. It's setting up for a failure trade because your large signal line is above the minimum threshold of 65. So your failure trade started what? It started... The first wave trade, which is also the Momo trade, which starts these big trends. So you can see when it goes in order of importance. Failure trades will start it. Here's a failure trade right here. <clears throat> we broke the shallow zone. My oscillator is saying peg. So, so, so we're into the zone right here, right? It was like, buy the zone, buy the zone, turn the green reversal bar. No, it's not a slingshot yet. Why? Because right here... I'm not getting I'm not getting my thin signal line jetting it went down through 20 it's not jetting up through 80 
if you see that, look right here, it's not jetting up through it. It actually started failing at this level. Start failing right there, like the S&P is doing right now. That's where the that's where the Nasdaq futures start failing. There. That's the Babe Ruth home run hitter. Right there. That's when it started failing. Because my oscillator was below my minimum threshold of 40, even better right here is below 20. Then what happens? We get a move, start moving down. We get a trend change. We get a first wave trade on the 120. Love the first wave trades on the NASDAQ futures. I come up into the deep zone. I get above 80. I get back below 20. And I get a slingshot. Trade set up. And then I go right into a MOMO. Below 65 on this retracement. And do a MOMO. So you can see the failure trades actually start trends. They will start trends to the upside or downside for a trend change. Right? You just got to watch your large signal line to see when that big trend is going to start. So you can pretty much tell when a trend change is going to happen. I mean, a failure trade is going to happen. And when these other trades are going to start firing off. So if I look at the S&P right now, I went into two slingshots this morning. Last one was at uh, 743. This is not a slingshot. This is a possible failure short if you want to take a shot at it. Right there. That's a possible high in the S&P right there. Why? That's a possible high. How do I, how, how do I know that that's a possible high in the S&P? I know it before it even happens. Why? Because when I get into my zone, I know my trading rules. My trading rules say this. The failure trades start trends. And then once a trend starts, green to red or red to green, then I go into my first wave, then my MOMO, then my FCR slingshots. The FZR trades I nickname Babe Ruth trades. Why? Because they start big trends. We're in a possible big trend trade right now to the downside on the S&P. We're not in a trend trade. We're not in a first wave trade. That's got to go from green to red. We're not in a MOMO trade because a MOMO trade has to do what? It had to stay above my threshold of 40. It didn't stay above my threshold of 40. It was below 40 when we got a pull-in bar. So it's not a MOMO. And what I say about MOMOs, I want the MOMOs away from zone. I want, to, I want MOMOs away from zone. I'm looking for blow-off rallies, blow-off sell-offs, blow-off rallies. Why? Because I want my momentum set up to stay away from zones. I want to be away from my zone here. Look at the push here. Away from the put, away from the zone. Push, push, push. That's how your first targets get hit. That's how runners happen. So all you gotta do is watch for this price action as we move through. So it's not a slingshot because I don't have this oscillator. It stopped right at my 80 threshold. These were entries. So we have a what? If I break through my order block, I may have a big breakdown in the S&P where I'm, then I'm going to look for what? I'm going to look for Momos, slingshots to bring me down to the downside. All right, Gerald, go shut that off. So that is the rhythm of the market. 